After settling on Mars, the Saiyans grew to like the Earthlings. So much so that there are Saiyan-human relationships going on left and right. The Z fighters joined the Tenkaichi Budokai and they also met Piccolo Jr. whom they easily beat. Kakara also got married to Chi Chi and all was well. A few years later, the technology on Earth and Mars has skyrocketed. However, everything changes when an unknown boy lands on Earth in a weird machine. Who is he and what is his deal? My name is Michael from Vegeta T23 and welcome to what if Vegeta was born with Ultra Instinct Bar 5. Sit back and enjoy the intro. 11 o'clock, who's bringing my phone? I'm just cool, lay back like Nina Simone. And that's fresh, fresh, fresh. It's Urza, Michael's wife. Make sure you subscribe to Vegeta T23 and turn on notifications if you'd like to be notified of the next upload. If you wish to get the notification the second the video is out, join the T23 Discord server. The folks are friendly and you can meet your favorite Sayyid King. All of the socials are in the description and on the channel page. Vegeta, Kakra, and the unknown boy stand face to face opposed to each other, getting slightly uncomfortable. Kakra breaks the silence. Hey, he looks like Trunks. Vegeta takes a closer look and sees himself in the kid's face and Boma's hair on his head, wondering if his son used the Dragon Balls to become an adult or if it's the product of the hybrid evolution. The kid explains that his name is Trunks and that he indeed is Vegeta's son, but from the future. Vegeta is just shocked to see his future son but can see the resemblance. Trunks says that he is a very hard person to take down due to being born with a perfectly synced DNA to match Ultra Instinct power up. Vegeta asks Trunks to elaborate and Trunks indeed does, saying that he was born with a weird ability to act out on instinct. Knowing what it is, he gets that part, but being born with it is a bit trickier so Trunks does continue, saying the mutation is in his DNA made his brain develop differently for battle and not as he usually would have. Having that, Vegeta naturally evolved into what they call the ultimate Saiyan, while in reality he was conceived with this and evolved by brain damage of sorts. Vegeta finally understood what his power actually was and that it was a normal transformation he was stuck in. Trunks then explained what happened to his timeline, hence being from the future. He explained that these androids caused havoc on Earth and killed almost all the Z fighters, leaving him and Bulma as sole survivors. Trunks then says Vegeta will die from a heart virus and that there is no cure as of right now, but in his future there is a cure, giving him a medicine bottle. Vegeta thanks him and Trunks then says his goodbyes and returns to his machine. He fixes the core components and then the parts leaving Capsule Corp open for everyone to see due to Trunks' appearance. Vegeta thinks about what Trunks said and comes to only one possible conclusion. He actually needs to train. Three years pass and they're ready for the androids. They get to the outskirts and wait. The androids arrive and with it they go in the city. They find 19 and 20 and tell them to go in the outskirts to fight. They agree and depart. Kakra turns Super Saiyan and starts picking them apart accordingly. Kakra notices Vegeta being slightly out of breath and asks him if he's good. Vegeta just says he is and continues on fighting. Once the time came for 20 to die, he's nowhere to be seen. Suddenly, Vegeta falls down and grabs his chest in pain, knowing the virus has finally struck his heart. Yajirobe and Bulma are panicking as to what's going on and Yamcha explains that he just collapsed from the hype virus and went out like a dead light bulb. Meanwhile, Krillin notifies everyone how he found Jiro's lab. At the same time, Future Trunks arrives and sees the Z fighters, letting the nostalgia take over for a bit before descending. Everyone looks at Trunks. What? We defeated the androids. 
You do realize that old man and a fat stain weren't the real androids, right? During all the babble, the door opened to reveal the new addition. Or better said, the real androids and Drill's head on the ground. See? How in the f- The new androids ignore everyone and just depart on their merry way. Meanwhile, Future Trunks is notified of a time machine similar to his found in the outskirts. Future Trunks is shocked because there's only one time machine in existence which is the one he has in his pocket as a capsule. When he got to the place where the machine was, Future Trunks confirms that it was his time machine. However, it looked a bit aged with moss and had damage to the dome. Damage showing that someone or something blasted its way out. Soon, Boma discovers an exoskeleton of some disgusting looking creature. Soon, all of the Z fighters sense strange and familiar power levels from far away. Also, there is a news report depicting that a local suburban district population completely vanished. All that was revealed was scattered clothing about everywhere and signs of a struggle. Tien arrives shortly after as Piccolo explains the situation of Cell to Vegeta. Future Trunks leaves to destroy the imperfect cell that is probably growing in this timeline to prevent another imperfect cell later. Meanwhile, Piccolo and Tien search desperately for imperfect cell, knowing that he has hidden his key and is ever getting stronger by absorbing more victims. In the meantime, Cell has become semi-perfect and beat Piccolo up quite a bit. Vegeta goes towards Cell to have a fight with him, thinking Piccolo is still weak, so he goes. Once he arrives, he sees Cell for the first time. With Vegeta and Cell having a short stare down, they begin the battle. Vegeta was heavily underestimating the creature as he got pounded down like a slaughtered animal. The rest of the gang came and saw the ongoing battle and were cringing hard. He knew he can't keep it up as good as he thought, so Vegeta goes into Super Ultra Instinct. Basically a combination of Ultra Instinct and Super Saiyan and continues the battle, eagerly waiting for Cell to be defeated so he can rid the world of those androids once and for all. But he wasn't making much of a dent at all. Vegeta didn't even surpass Cell in the slightest. But Cell revealed his true height anyways, as he exploded in a violent aura similar to the UI aura of Vegeta's. Cell then went to town basically destroying Vegeta in combat. Cell then goes and beats Vegeta one last time as Vegeta falls to the ground. Cell then asks if any of them would like to die by him as well. But just as he was about to finish that sentence, Kakara went and did a solar flare, took Vegeta and pretty much everyone there and ditched, knowing none of them stood his chance. They were then taken to Capsule Corp. Kakara then changes the topic asking about the time chamber. He mentions they can use it but was limited by Kami, who is now fused with Piccolo. Vegeta, thinking of something, comes up with the concept of a new guardian. So he goes and flies to Namek with the help of his old pot. Once he arrives, he asks for a new Earth guardian, and he meets Dende. The two then get to know each other a little, and the two then return back as quickly as they came. Once the two came back, they meet Dende and get to know him, as well as signing a contract with Earth. Kakar then gets straight to the point and asks for the Dragon Balls to be restored and for the time chamber to be given no limits, because they have a new threat on Earth that will shroud it in total darkness. Then they says he can do it with ease. Hearing the news, the boys prepare for the venture and they fly to the lookout. Upon arrival, the little Bardock mentions how they need a plan if they want the training to be perfect. Vegeta simply ignores and goes in the chamber by himself. Exiting a day later, Vegeta then tells to rest to train their muscles off in the meantime while he takes care of business. Kakra and Bardock enter and after a few hours, Vegeta senses something disturbing. He thinks about Cell perhaps finding and absorbing 18, becoming perfect. Vegeta then uses that new Super Saiyan form he acquired and goes towards Cell. Once he arrives, he attacks Cell. Vegeta then proceeds to pummel his ass left and right with a new form he got. Kakarot and Bardock look on in utter confusion once they arrive as Vegeta fires a massive weight, hitting Cell and defeating him. Everyone else descended to see Vegeta as defeated Cell surprisingly, leaving 18 the only one remaining. Krillin takes the chance and takes 18, 
already feeling himself inside her. With that, the squad defeated the androids, more or less. Trunks goes back to the future and successfully defeats the androids, including Cell. And with that, we're leaving things be for now. Thank you for watching. If you think I'm a good cryptologist, then click dislike. But if you liked the video, hit the like button. Please feel free to check out the sparring partners on my channel page and, you know, give them some love. If you'd like me to cover your idea in the near future, comment down below. And as always, peace out.